And for the 21st century, we thought it might be useful, uh, very useful to have it anticipate what, what would we like to have accomplished? What are, what are the challenges we have? What are the problems that society has that engineering might be able to make the biggest difference in? So we started thinking about that ahead of time, so we might actually be able to not only predict what needed to be done, but actually providing a level of guidance to companies and to individuals as to what they should be shooting for. We believe we should aim high. Even if you fail to reach it, you should be aiming high. In fact, if you don't fail a few times, you haven't aimed high enough. Just one of the, the amazing statistics that I heard was that the state of California uses something like 30% of its energy to yeah. pump water from Northern California down to Southern California, mm -hmm. which is just amazing. Yeah. Um, and you just think about the amount of energy that is just, just moving something that's evaporating as it's going. Yeah. It's truly incredible. We made a lot of progress on solar. Yeah. And you can imagine, particularly in Southern California, a huge solar array being set up right, mm -hmm. right on the edge of the ocean to drive the, provide the electricity for the, uh, for the desalinization plant. Because one of the big costs of desalinization plant is the cost of the power. Mm -hmm. So if you can get that cost down to close to zero, you can maybe start seeing even standard desalinization techniques being economical. Our aspiration when we wrote the report in the first place was it would challenge individuals, and particularly young people. The Grand Challenge Scholars Program is one of the only current programs that really allows you as an undergraduate to start learning about the technology, the context, and how you can really affect um, some of the world's most important problems. Not necessarily as a 40-year-old, as a 30-year-old, but as a 20-year-old. And how you can take the expertise that you will learn as an undergraduate and begin to directly apply that in areas where society both locally and globally needs it. And that's something that most young people really have a hunger for. Great educators do two things. They teach you the skills and the technology that they have learned. So it's an imparting of information. But the other thing they do, which is at least as important, is they inspire students to want to learn. So that's the sort of thing that I think engineers should be looking at, and that's certainly the issues, inspiration behind the Grand Challenges. In 2013, I attended the Grand Challenges Summit in London, England. I got a lot out of being in the same place as just so many luminaries in the engineering fields in one place and being able to just get so many broad perspectives on where technology has come, where it's going, and all of the myriad challenges associated with that from people who had been in the world of entrepreneurship, in the world of academia, uh, in the world of public policy, um, and even younger folks like myself. I was on a, on a panel about kind of the next steps and, and, where, and where some of these challenges should go. And you start not only seeing uh, the excitement from kind of the older generations that are you know, really pointing towards these problems as the things that we need to do in the next 50 years, next 70 years, to really make sure that our society is on, is on sustainable footing going forward.